All students, I am Professor Masood Fuzail. Today we are going to discuss parabronchi or respiration in birds. To understand the exact mechanism of respiration in birds, first of all we have to look at the anatomy of the bird, especially the air passageway of the uh, birds. So I have I had made a diagram already made for you. This is a bird. On the beak of the bird, there are two tiny openings which are known as external nares, which leads into nasal passageway. From nasal, pass nasal passageway opens into pharynx and pharynx opens into a tube-like structure which is known as trachea. Trachea is also known as windpipe. At the end of the trachea where bronchi uh, originate, there is a sac-like structure which is known as syrinx which helps the bird to produce different sounds. When trachea divides into two bronchi, left bronchus and right bronchus which leads into left lung and lung, right lung. There are two lungs present in the thoracic cavity of the body. As, as you can see in this diagram I have made in the black color. These lungs uh, contain small uh, tube-like structure which is known as parabronchi. Parabronchi unlike uh, other bronchi of uh, kingdom animalia, these bronchi are open on both sides. Air enters from one side of the bronchi and moves out of the other side of the bronchi. Associated with the lungs of the bird, there are some air sacs which are nine in number. There are two cavities present in the body of the bird. One is thoracic cavity and other is the abdominal cavity. A thoracic cavity is on the anterior side of the body and it contains air sacs which are present in the thoracic cavity are known as thoracic air sacs as you can see in the blue diagram. These air sacs penetrate the thoracic region of the body and sometimes they penetrate deep into the uh, near the bones. The other cavity just below the thora uh, thoracic is a abdominal cavity. Abdominal cavity also contains some air sacs which are associated with the lungs. These cavities are known as, these air sacs are known as abdominal air sacs. The mechanism of uh, re respiration in birds is totally different from mechanism of respiration in amphibians, reptiles and mammals. As in mammals, for example, uh, lungs are usually spongy. They expand and uh, compress they can be inflated and then at the same time they can be deflated with help of air but the lungs of the birds usually are not spongy and they have constant flow of air from one side of the lungs to the other side of the lungs number one number two uh, there are certain muscles and some uh, bones which helps to uh, make the process of respiration easy so let's discuss two points. Number one, the respiration rate of respiration depends upon increase or decrease of thorax volume. As you know that thoracic cavity has a volume and it depends on the, the, resp the rate of respiration depends upon the, th the volume of the thorax cavity. So if uh, birds need more air, then there should be more volume of the thoracic cavity. If body needs less oxygen, there should be less amount of less amount of volume of the thoracic cavity. Number two, alternate expansion and compression of air sacs. These air sacs acts as bellows. So many bellows contracting and relaxing at the same time. And uh, uh, when air sacs expand, they brings air inside the lungs or air sacs. When they when they compress, air moves out of the air sacs into the lungs and from outside the body. To aid in the process of respiration, muscles and bones like sternum and ribs and furcula, which are bones of the birds thoracic region, they also helps in the process of respiration. So what is the exact mechanism of respiration? Let's discuss with the help of a diagram. 
so i have made a diagram uh, as you can see in this uh, section of the whiteboard this is the opening external opening of the air from no, uh, external nares air moves into the nasal passageway and it reaches a sac like structure which is known as abdominal sac as you can see over here so from the nose air fresh air reaches into the abdominal sac in this case abdominal sacs expands at the same times this area of the diagram shows the lungs which contain small tubes which are known as parabronchi the air present in the lungs and parabronchi also moves from this region to into these sacs these sacs are known as thoracic sacs so the when first cycle start because the respiration of birds completes in two cycles this is first cycle in cycle 1 air from atmosphere enters into the nasal passageway and then reaches to the abdominal sacs which expands at the same time air present in the lungs and parabronchi moves into the thoracic air sacs and thoracic air sacs also expand this process is known as inspiration now the the cycle 1 will be completed at the process of expiration in this case both of the air sacs will be compressed now look at this diagram this is a thoracic air sac it is the arrow shows that the air sac is compressing with the help of muscles of the wings and bones and the ribs of the body when these air sacs are compressed air moves from air sac into the nasal passageway and outside the body and the air present in the abdominal air sac which is fresh air after compression of the air sacs abdominal air sacs air moves into the lungs and parabronchi so this is the first cycle now let's move on to the second cycle during the cycle uh, sec second cycle of the uh, respiration same process will takes place inspiration and expiration during inspiration air moves into the nasal passageway and into the abdominal sacs which expands and air present in the lungs and parabronchi after compression of the lungs moves into the thoracic air sacs in this case thoracic air sacs also expands now the process of expiration which is also same as previously described with the help of the muscles and the bones of the body compression takes place when abdominal air sacs are compressed air moves from this region into the lungs and air present in the thoracic air sacs when they are compressed air moves from this sac into the nasal passageway and out of the body so in this way a complicated manner air constantly enters from the nasal passageway moves into the respiratory tract and then leaves outside the body so as you can see over here air comes in into the abdominal air sacs from there it goes into lungs into parabronchi then into thoracic air sacs and then outside the body constantly ventilating with no stale air present in the lungs so this is the best respiratory system found in all the animal kingdoms because birds have high metabolic rate and they have to fly long distance and in this uh, thousand of kilometers of long journey they never get tired and this is the only reason because they their lungs are built in such a way that they are constantly ventilated with fresh air and fresh oxygen is provided to the muscles of the body and birds can fly long distance and very great high where any other animals of the animal kingdom cannot do so so i have summarized this whole process in an in an equation manner so that you can easily understand first of all uh, external air fresh air which contain oxygen oxygenated air enters to the external layers which are openings small openings present on the anterior side of the body which leads into nasal passageway in the nasal passageway air is uh, moist made moist and also its temperature is regulated after 
from air from nasal passage enters into the pharynx and from pharynx air, air enters into the trachea at the end of the trachea there is a small air like sac like structure which is syrinx which is a voice box and which helps in the production of sounds of the birds from trachea there are two bronchi which originate from the bronchi which leads into the air sacs bronchi leads into air sacs and air sacs join together to form lungs and lungs contain small uh, tubules which microscopic tubules which are which con which are known as parabronchi which are associated with rich amount of blood capillaries where gaseous exchange takes place oxygen moves into the blood and co2 is taken away and after uh, in the lungs parabronchi exchange of gases takes place and then after uh, the air which contain more oxygenated more carbon dioxide moves again into the air sacs which are usually uh, thoracic air sacs and from thoracic air sacs air moves into trachea and from trachea the air containing co2 is removed outside of the body so in this way the process of respiration has been completed i hope it makes sense and uh, until um, this lecture is <coughs> Until now this is finished and uh, hopefully see you in the next lecture. Until then bye.